Day two of the European Darts Grand Prix as we say hello to the top seeds. Could Mervyn King light it up with some maximum mayhem? If so, how would the ruthless one respond? Fist pumps for the dream maker or would the diamond dab and book his place in the top 16? And how about Gerwin Price? After that tungsten tussle with Super Chin in the Premier League, he had his sights set on another Northern Irishman this afternoon, Saturday in Sindelfigan, today on High Roller Radio. Yes, the second day of this, the sixth stop on the European Tour, it's heating up. Day two announced the PDC, the European Darts Grand Prix continues with second round action, and indeed, what a lineup at the Glass Palast. How about this, on social media late yesterday, just had a catch up with Daryl Gurney, tweeted Gerwin Price, and accepted his apology for being out of order. A heat of the moment reaction, life is too short to have enemies and hold grudges. He then said, see you tomorrow, mate, which by the way is today. We all remember what happened on night 15 in the Premier League Thursday, a 7-7 draw, and then this heated words. The ref had to step in, security as well. We retweeted the Iceman's post today saying, Apology accepted. Well done, boys. All right, first player introduced today, Krzysztof Ratajski, the Polish Eagle, making his way down the runway. All smiles, slapping hands with the fans, and then he acknowledged and waved at them once on stage. Of course, we got the heart signs from his opponent, Michael Smith's usual motif. No love loss, though, once at the Aki, after Ratajski held in the opening leg on double five. Look at this. Bully Boy kicking off the second with back-to-back -back 180s. He actually went seven darts into the nine before missing the treble 19. He wanted it too. Stood back in frustration. Well, guess what? He lost the leg from bad to worse. No, from bad to great because he recovered immediately with this. The 93 checkout going 25-18 bullseye. We got the look of utter relief and that spurred him on. He took four on the spin. This double eight for 4-2. What a turnaround. He liked it. This reaction after making it 5-2. Credit to the Eagle though. He hung tough with back-to-back -back 12 darters. But that was it. Smith clutch on the 72 checkout to win after Ratajski had missed bullseye to level. 6-4 your final. Michael Smith with huge scoring power. 7 180s. I'm not playing bad, he said. Just can't hit the outer ring. I don't stop working. I don't stop believing in myself. Congratulations to Bully Boy. This time he wins, tweeted Frankie Pohl. But the Polish Eagle played well, and hopefully he can keep that stuff for next weekend in the World Cup. But he says he has to improve his doubles. Mark McGinney with official greetings before his showdown with Joe Cullen. Rockstar having fun with the fans on his intro. Both players came out firing. Quality tilt this. Nice shot here of McGinney's arrows. A ton 40. Then this. Tops good for the 77 checkout. But Cullen was firing too. This maximum picture perfect. He then took a 143. But what a counter from the Gladiator. A 1-3-5 himself. Beautiful. Tit for tat. The pair exchanging holds through eight legs. But in the ninth, Cullen capitalized on Magini misses for first blood. A crucial break. Or was it? Because the Gladiator came right back. Ton 40 here. Followed by this. An 86 checkout on Bullseye. What a shot. And we were off to a deciding leg where this guy proved his worth, held his nerve and his throw for the 6-5 victory. A real nail-biter, that one. When he broke me, I thought that was it, he said. But I never give up. I keep fighting. He then had fun with the crowd, working them up. Great match that. Mark McGinney, you are a fabulous man, tweeted at the Henry Cheel. Charlie Gray was also impressed. Well played, Mark, and keep it going by playing like that. Johnny Clayton taking on Ross Smith next. Smith ahead 2-1 early, but the ferret stormed back. He started to find his range, doing a lot of this in taking three on the spin for 4-2. Trailing 5-3, Smith upped his game. He'd break for 5-4,
but he could not consolidate it. He missed the Shanghai on 20s here for 5-all. He would have been throwing for the match too. But no, instead, this double 10 would seal it, the Welshman surviving with a 6-4 victory. Ross wasn't firing like he can, he said, and thank God I needed that. James Richardson hit the stage running, singing along to Vindaloo. Mervyn King, meantime, checking out the lively German crowd. Let's show you how this one began. Three legs in, seven 180s, seven between them. The King with four of them. I mean, it was a blistering opening. Richardson would fire in his fourth maximum here in the fifth leg. However, King kept firing too. He took out 126 for the break, then landed this 180. The ruthless one then countered 3-3 after six legs, both players averaging a ton plus 105, playing 103. Brilliant stuff. From there, though, it was all James Richardson as he ran the table for the 6-3 victory, 12 180s between them as the red bit took a pounding. He was hitting them, I was hitting them. It was unbelievable, he said. I'm happy with the win. Ricky Evans up against Keegan Brown. Both these guys can hit maximums as well, and that they did. The needle with one here in the third leg to get the fans on their feet. The rapid one with one of his own in the following leg. En route to 2-2, all tied up after four legs. From there, though, it was pink power as Brown took the next three. Double eight here for a commanding 5-2 lead. And then this, another maximum, his fourth. He had a 110 checkout earlier, and he closed it out with a 107. Great performance. He cruised along. Touch wood, he said. I can keep it going. So, who's got the better moves? Dancing, Dimitri Vandenberg, or Ian White with his diamond dab? You decide. Corey Cadby in the crowd, loving the darts. Headwear fit for a king right there. White was letting his darts decide the outcome of this one. He was all over it. In the second leg, had a shot at a 10-darter. Settled for the madhouse a few darts later. That was a break. He then pushed it to 3-0. But back came the Belgian, fifth leg, big shot, the 86 checkout on Bullseye, a break back for the fist pump, he'd then hold for three apiece. At 4-4, we check out the averages, 96 playing 97, it's close, and yes, we'd get to a last leg shootout where Dimitri got down first. But ouch, made a mess of things, squandering three match darts, including this one in the madhouse. On 20, he hit the single 15 first. Relief for White as he hits the game winner 6-5, your final, the diamond lives on. Every time anyone plays me, he said, they play out of their skin. He then added, I'm playing well. But if he would have hit that double, I'd be out. Lucky Ian White, said the Irish darts fan, who then made note of our next affair, the final of the afternoon between Gavin Carlin and Gerwin Price. Northern Ireland v. Wales. What could possibly go wrong? We know who the Irish darts fan was cheering for. His man started well, too. The cannon can play as we admire the averages at 2-1 Price midway through the fourth leg quality, but Price would win that leg with a massive 137 checkout, 57 tops tops for some refreshments. He then rock and rolled from there all the way to 5-1, dominating performance, a 103.41 average. Wales takes it, 6-1 year final. I done all right, he said. He then joked, are they cheering or booing? I just concentrate on my own game. So there you have it. Just the seven matches played this afternoon. James Wade, remember, you see there at the top, has withdrawn from the tourney. We'll have eight more tilts tonight. How about it? As Rob Cross, Daryl Gurney, and MVG all see action. Plus, look at that. Max Hopp versus Nathan Aspinall. What a showdown. Can't wait. The European Darts Grand Prix, Saturday at the Darts today on High Roller Radio.